Hi, I'm Em from 21 Readers, and today I'll be comparing Apples Never Fall, the book, to the show. This video will be specifically focused on just the first episode of the show, because I've only watched the first episode so far, and the first episode is free if you make a Peacock account and you don't have to pay. So I'm going to be specifically comparing the book to the first episode since I've only watched the first episode so far. First I'm going to talk about the book and review it. Then I'm going to talk about things I was hoping the book would keep, change, or take out for the show. Then I'm going to be talking about the first episode of the show. Things I thought that worked and didn't work for the first episode and where I think the show is going to go from here. And then my main question throughout talking through all of this is going to be me deciding if I'm going to continue with the rest of the show because I've only seen the first episode and also sharing my thoughts to hopefully help you make a decision on if you're going to watch the show or if you've only watched the free first episode and you're not sure if you're going to continue on in the series or not. That's going to be my main point of this video is to formulate my thoughts on how I thought the first episode was particularly compared to the book overall and try to make my own decision of if I'm going to continue in the show and help you make your decision as well. So regarding spoilers, I'm only going to spoil what's happened in the first episode of the show. I'm not going to spoil the rest of the show and thus in my book review I'm also not going to spoil anything from the book that has not already happened in the first episode of the show. So when I talk about the book and the characters, I might talk about their character traits or things that I thought was done well or poorly in the book, but I'm not going to be revealing any plot twists or plot details or spoilers that haven't already been revealed in the first episode of the show. So this is going to be a mostly spoiler-free video besides anything that happened in that first episode. So I'll start with my book review. I originally read this book in August of 2021. It was one of my first ever Goodreads giveaways that I won. This is an advanced copy. It says on sale September 2021. So this book originally published in 2021 by Leanne Moriarty. It's the same author as Big Little Lies, which was an HBO show. And it's the same author as Nine Perfect Strangers, which is a Hulu show. And now we have Apples Never Fall, which just premiered today, March 14th, on Peacock. So I originally read this in August 2021, and then I just reread it this week and finished it yesterday, March 13th, in preparation for the show. When I first read the book, I gave it four stars. I remember the main thing I enjoyed about it was the sibling dynamics. This book is classified as contemporary fiction and mystery, although it feels more like a contemporary fiction, even though there is a mystery at the center. This is following a family with four adult children and their two parents who have just retired. And this is a tennis family because the parents spent their careers coaching tennis and being the business owners of their own tennis academy. And then the four adult children played tennis as kids, but now they don't play tennis anymore. And the main mystery at the center of the book is that in our first chapter, the mom of the family named Joy goes missing. So that's the basic premise of the book is what happened to the mom. That's the background of the family is that we have four adult children and they all are a tennis family. When I originally read the book in 2021, I gave it four stars. And I remember all these years later that the main thing that I enjoyed about the book was the sibling dynamics. There's four kids who are in their 20s and 30s, two boys, two girls. They all have different careers, different personality traits and flaws, and they not only have their own individual character arcs throughout the book, but also how their relationship evolves with their siblings throughout, as well as with their parents. And so I remember my main takeaway from when I first read it was that even though we had a mystery at the center of the book, the main thing I enjoyed was those sibling dynamics. And then upon rereading it this week, my main takeaways were, wow, this book was way longer than it needed to be. And also I kind of forgot all of the marriage dynamics that were going on because not only did we have the sibling dynamics that I remembered, but there's also a lot of marriage dynamics because, because as the reader you're not really sure how was their marriage and is the husband involved with the wife's disappearance. And so I kind of forgot that that was honestly the main dynamics in addition to the sibling dynamics. So I would say the marriage dynamics were probably touched upon more than the sibling ones, but I kind of forgot about that until I just reread it. And then my opinion stands on the mystery not being a strong part of the book. And even though this was a nominee in the Goodreads Choice Awards back in 2021, in the mystery thriller category, this really reads like a contemporary fiction and not so much a mystery thriller. That being said, these were some things as I was doing my reread of the book this week that I was thinking about for the show or hoping the show would do or improve upon. And my main thought on this is that I thought the book read more contemporary than mystery, but I definitely was thinking that the show really needs to go all in on the mystery element in order to keep viewers invested and suspenseful. 
I think that is gonna toe the line between family drama and mystery thriller. I didn't think the book was as strong with the mystery at the center, which makes me think that they're going to have to add more reveals or more suspenseful sequences than were included in the plot of Apples Never Fall. So my prediction in general is that the show is gonna have to add more suspense somehow beyond just did the husband do it, did one of the siblings do it, things like that. I think there's gonna end up being probably more set up against the husband, name Stan in the show than there was in the book. Another thing I thought the book did well was that whenever we were learning about this missing persons case, we were getting perspectives from different people in the community or in the neighborhood, such as a barista, a nail technician, a hairstylist, a taxi driver, a patient at a doctor's office. We were getting chapters told from all these people in the neighborhood's perspective, which added this level of neighborhood tension and the public opinion. And I definitely wonder if the show is going to continue to have a lens where we're getting a glimpse on what the neighbors are thinking or if we're really just going to focus on the main family members here. Going off of the mystery of it all, again this will be a no spoilers video, but I do think what we end up learning about what happened to Joy might be actually quite different than the book because the book's ending and the ultimate twist kind of fizzled out and wasn't very shocking and we even had a lot more book to go once we actually found out what happened to Joy and so the pacing of the book fell off which makes me think that something is going to be drastically different with the ending or with the twist than the book because ultimately that would if this is an eight episode mini series that would be a disappointing watch to go sit through eight episodes just for the final reveal to be what it was so i'm predicting this show will end differently than the book in some way or another i also think the character of savannah is going to be treated differently and her backstory might be different because I remember not liking that character in my original read of this but in my reread this week she was particularly insufferable which I know is the point but her involvement throughout the book seemed a little caricature-y villain at some parts so I am wondering how they're gonna treat Savannah since she's the outsider of the family and she's also insufferable. I'm also wondering about Joy's narrative because in the book there was a lot of talk of her being hip and listening to podcasts to try to be with the times and I don't remember if it felt dated at the time some of the things she was learning about when I read it in 2021 but it definitely already felt dated rereading this in 2024 some of the things that Joy was learning about and on to the siblings I remember enjoying Amy in particular because of her mental health struggles and her trying to compare herself to her siblings but also having oldest sister tendencies but also feeling like her life was in shambles so I'm hoping that Amy has some type of arc that's relatable to the book because I did enjoy the fact that she was a bit all over the place in the book but based on the Amy casting I'm not so convinced that that's gonna be the character that we're portrayed so I guess we can talk about the casting which is I think that the casting of Troy is well done. Troy is cast as Jake Lacey who was in The White Lotus. His scenes in The White Lotus arguing with Murray Bartlett were some of my favorite scenes in season one of The White Lotus but that being said, the arrogance in that character is hopefully going to be brought here with Troy, although it does seem upon first watch in this pilot that all of the siblings' arcs are going to be slightly different, which I'll touch on more when I talk about my thoughts on the pilot. But casting-wise, Annette Benning as the as Joy is what's bringing me in to the, wanting to watch this show in the first place, but the Troy casting of Jake Lacey being arrogant in the book and Jake Lacey's character in The White Lotus being arrogant I think is well done. I'm not familiar with Sam Neill's work who plays Stan but Stan in the book was very curmudgeon and aggressive so I'm hoping that in the show Stan has a little bit more nuance to him besides just tennis curmudgeon aggressive. And then I talked about Amy. I'm a little confused by the casting of Alison Brie. She's definitely one of the more famous people in the cast so it makes sense they don't want somebody more famous to bring in fans of her. However, this casting doesn't really seem on the surface level like this character is going to have a mental health arc so we'll see. I'm hoping the mental health arc is still in for the show. It's one of my things I'm most looking forward to seeing is this character of Amy in addition to like I mentioned hoping that they improve the ending the suspense level and do something more interesting with Savannah instead of caricature type things. Logan's casting I think is the most opposite of what I was picturing when I was reading. I was picturing Logan as more like built like a rugby player like they described in the book and this casting for Logan does not match that and Brooke I didn't really picture anybody. I think I just pictured her like boring and blonde so we'll see what happens with Brooke. So I think Amy is the one I have my highest expectations for 
and Savannah and Stan I hope improve the most. I don't really have much expectations for the other characters. I guess I said I'm hoping the things that Joy is focused on improving herself with is more updated and doesn't feel as dated like the book. I think those were the main things that I was thinking about when rereading the book this week for my hopes and dreams for the show if you will. So now I'm gonna move into my thoughts on the first episode. The first episode is called The Delaney's. It's 45 minutes and I was overall kind of disappointed with the pilot and it really left me not wanting to push play on episode two. I watched it this morning before work and realized oh I didn't have to pay to watch the first episode. So I'm just gonna watch the first episode for free, then make a first episode review, and then make my decision on if I'm gonna keep paying. But basically, I was kind of underwhelmed by the first episode. I thought it was funny when we got the reveal that from the detectives that this was taking place in Palm Beach, Florida, because the book takes place in Australia. And so I just assumed that the show was gonna take place in Australia and then they didn't have accents. So then I was thinking, oh, maybe we're just like, in a nondescript seaside town and then the Palm Beach setting reveal was kind of funny to me. They made Brooke queer. She has a girlfriend which I was not expecting because Brooke was definitely the most boring of the four siblings and now she's the most intriguing in terms of I already noticed a change in her character. It seems like Brooke is gonna have a similar arc from the book with regard to the physical therapy practice not being well off but in the book Brooke and her husband were separating so I'm definitely wondering how the relationship of Brooke and her girlfriend Gina is gonna evolve over the series. And at this point, is Brooke and Gina the only reason I'm gonna keep watching? Potentially. We have, oh, we have Jake. Okay, Jake's character is Troy. And I saw on the Wikipedia page that this actress named Katrina Lenk was cast in the show. And Katrina Lenk is an actress I've enjoyed on Broadway in the past in this musical called The Band's Visit. And when I saw Katrina Lenk was in the show, I saw her character name was not a character from the book. So I was thinking maybe it was like a random neighbor that they renamed. But then Katrina Lenk's character was the one who was in bed with Troy. And so I'm thinking Troy's arc might be completely different than the book because the arc in the book is Troy letting his ex use their embryo so I'm almost wondering if they change the whole arc for him. It seems like we're keeping the arc for Amy with regard to her potentially getting with her roommate Simon and then for Logan. Logan is with Indira his girlfriend and he's a community college professor in the book but in this one Joy describes him as liking beaches and yoga which is not at all like the book. So I guess maybe Logan and Brooke are the most different from the book so far. Getting into the show, the sibling banter scenes should be the most intriguing to me based on the first episode just because I like the sibling conversations in the book but so far the sibling conversations have just been okay. Their scenes together. I'm hoping if, if I were to continue the show I'm hoping that their scenes when they're conniving against Savannah make it more fun. Joy and Stan are kind of dull which is a little disappointing because I was hoping to see Annette have some really juicy scenes so hopefully that was just the setup of the show and Annette does have some more scenes that stand out here getting her monologue moments like Nicole Kidman and Nine Perfect Strangers, so many characters, and Big Little Lies have their shining moments, Emmy reel. So I'm wondering when Joy is gonna get that. Savannah, I immediately cannot stand Savannah, which is the point. However, I was a little surprised and disappointed with how the initial Savannah scene went. Cause I remember in the book when Savannah shows up at their doorstep saying that she was hurt and needed a place to stay. It was dripping with desperation and like what's going on. And as the reader, I was wondering if she was in immediate danger but the scene in this one felt way more low stakes. It seems like they immediately welcomed her in to stay, which I get we have to kind of speed up the pacing here since it's only an eight episode series, but the Savannah involvement in their life just seemed very expedited. I also noticed we had a lot more tennis playing in the pilot than I was expecting. I don't really think we really had scenes of them playing tennis together in the book, but it was supposed to be this dramatic tennis scene of Stan and Troy playing tennis together towards the end of episode one but between the music of that scene I didn't really like the music choice of that scene and I was just confused and thinking like are we gonna get a lot of tennis scenes? The animosity in the book with Stan and his kids wasn't 
as overt as I feel like this first episode made it seem like it was. So I guess I was just a little surprised that we were getting tennis exposition and Stan was very grumpy clearly. I just wasn't necessarily invested in the family drama and the sibling dynamics and the parent-child dynamics as I was hoping for and that I was in the book. So overall, I was pretty disappointed with the pilot in terms of I thought I was going to be invested, I thought I was going to immediately want to pay for premium and start episode two to see, oh, what are the changes going to be? What's going to be improved by the story? But as much as I was curious about how they're changing some of the sibling arcs, the story at the center seems a little lackluster. And as much as I am curious how they're going to change the story, I don't like how Savannah is being portrayed. I don't really care about her infiltrating their life at this point. And the main reason I would keep watching is to see the family drama and the sibling drama unveil. And I'm hoping as we learn more about the family and about their past, it'll become more intriguing what actually happened to Joy. But given I was underwhelmed with what happened to Joy in the book, I'm almost thinking there really isn't gonna be a payoff here for the show. So overall, this was a pretty underwhelming first episode. I think I saw that the second episode was gonna be called Logan which makes me think we're going to get more Logan backstory because the episode one ends with Logan telling the detective, oh, I need to tell you about this girl, Savannah. Actually, let me see if they've revealed what all the episode titles are. Okay, so these are all character names for the episodes. Oh, there's only seven episodes. Okay, so we have the pilot is the Delaney's. Then we have Logan, Amy, Brooke, Troy, Stan, Joy. Okay, I'm glad Savannah doesn't get her own episode title. I really could go either way of if I finish this one. I I really feel like since I invested so much time in rereading this long book, nearly 500 pages, that I should just watch it all. I really didn't enjoy the pilot much. The most excited I was was seeing, oh, Brooke has a girlfriend, and seeing, oh, Katrina Lank from Broadway is in this, and she's with Jake Lacey from The White Lotus. But in terms of the actual story, I was pretty bored. And the tennis scenes, and Stan continuing to just be a grumpy old man didn't really hold my interest and makes me wonder if I'm already bored by the setup, how is this going to hold my interest for seven episodes? Tell me in the comments your thoughts on Apples Never Fall, if you're going to be watching it, and if you have watched it all, if you think it's worth continuing past the first episode, as well as how you think the show compares to the book, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.